up number one. Find all pairs of factors of C. Find all pairs of factors of C. And what C is, it's the constant at the end, so no variable attached to it. From that list, find the one pair that adds or subtracts from that list. Find the one pair that adds or subtracts to give B. And I'll explain what B means in a second. From that list, find the one pair of that adds or subtracts to give you B. Step three, write the answer. In the form, grabbing my red pen, X plus a number, X plus a number. And the pluses can be minuses, but that's what you're looking for is two binomials in the end. What's this B and C stuff? Well, if we go way back into the title, this is what we're calling the trinomials. We call them x squared plus bx plus c. So c is always the number that's at the end by itself, the constant. b is always the coefficient of x squared. So if we look at example one, what is b and what is c? What is b? Seven. And what is c? Ten. That's what we mean by c, b and c. It's just how to name the numbers that come in the equation. Step number one, we start at the back. We start with that C value. And what we want to do is list all the pairs of factors of 10. So what are all the things I can multiply together to get 10? What are my choices? Two, Two and five is one choice. One and 10 is the second choice. And we want to write them in pairs because they come together in groups. That's step number one. You just list out all the pairs of factors of the constant or the last number we call C. You can do that in your head. So you don't need to write that down if you don't want to. You can just visually pick, look at them if you can in your head. Step number two is we go to the middle number, which we call B. And from that list above, there's going to be one pair that's either going to add or subtract to give you seven. So you can put any kind of negatives, any kinds of positives, but you need to add or subtract to give you seven. So one plus 10, does that equal seven? No. One minus 10? No. Negative one plus 10? No. Is anything with one and 10, any combination, going to give you seven? No. Two and five? Yes, so I'm going to write seven as two plus five. That's the only pair that's going to add or subtract to give me seven. Step number three is going right to the answer. First part's got to be x and x, because we know we're starting with an x squared. And then we just write down those pairs, plus two, plus five. There's factoring. That's working backwards. We call this product sum factoring, because the numbers have to multiply to give you 10, which is a product, and they have to add or subtract to give you seven, which is a sum. Why do we do that? Well, it's the backwards foil. The last step of foiling is 2 times 5. Well, that's where the 10 has to come from. The very last step of foiling, when we circle the like terms, what are we doing with, the, with them when we put them together? When we combine like terms, what's the operation we're doing? Adding. That's where the sum comes from. So it's just backwards foiling. Kim? Does it matter? Nope. 
Nope, I could put x plus 5, x plus 2. That's a really good question. Okay, let's just practice a whole bunch. That's, that's an example from two days ago. Helps if I flip the right page. Number three, x squared plus 4x plus 3. So again, we call this product sum factoring, and that's going to be actually a method we're going to develop more in the unit. So you'll see me a lot of times as I'll put P and S, because that's what I'm going to teach you in two days, so I'm just used to doing it for this. Product is the last number. It's what we call the constant. It's a C value. The sum we're looking for is the middle number, which is called the B value. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us 3, add or subtract to give us 4. There's only one combination in the entire world. So either in your head or if you're visual, write it down. We don't have a lot of choice for the, pro for the product. What's the only numbers that multiply to give me 3? 1 and 3. I got no other choice. All I need to do is find the combination that's going to give me 4. I can put any negatives, any positives, anything I want. What's the obvious combination that's going to give me 4? No, but it's got to come from the pairs up here. It's got to be 1 plus 3. Don't have any other options. Okay, so step number one is listing out the pairs that multiply to give us the last number. Step two is getting them to add or subtract to give us the middle number. Step three is just giving the answer. It's always going to be two binomials. It's going to start with x and x, because that's the only way to get our x squared. And then we just write them down, plus 1, plus 3. If we wanted to flip them, that's okay as well, plus 3, plus 1. Uh, maybe in two days. Not for today. Again, just remember this is opposite of what we did yesterday. This is jeopardy. So now we have the answer. We want to know what did we multiply to get it. Number four, x squared minus 10x plus 25. If you don't get this PNS thing today, don't worry because it just comes from what you do. So product is always the last number. It's that C value, the constant, the one that's all by itself. What are the pairs of factors we can multiply to get 25? 5 and 5. Other option? 1 and 25. Those are the only pairs of factors that I can multiply to get 25. The number we want is the middle number. It's the coefficient of x, so in this case it's negative 10. I need to use either 5 and 5 and 1 and 25 to get negative 10. Is 1 and 25, can I have any combination that's ever going to give me 10? No, so we know it's got to be 5 and 5. What can I do to 5 and 5 to make it add up to negative 10? I've got to make it negative 5, negative 5. And again, the only combination that's going to give me negative 10 is if they're both negative. The answer comes from that sum piece. It's going to start with x and x, because that's why we have an x squared. And now I'm just going to put them in order, negative 5, negative 5. Now take a look at this. What do you notice about the two binomials? They're the same, so how can I write that more simplified? x minus 5 squared. And those are the questions we had yesterday with binomial squared. That's where they come from. Show me your thumb so far. Getting this, kind of getting not this. Kinda. Good. b squared plus 12b plus 36. Do we care that it's b and not x? No, it just means in the final answer we're going to have a b. Product is the last number. It's where we start, and we're looking for all the numbers that multiply to give us 36. Again, if you can see them in your head, you don't have to write them down. It's up to you. I'm visual. I write them. So 1 and, 2 and, 3 and, 12, 4 and, ooh, I just heard three different answers there, 4 and 9, 5, Nope. Six and six. And how do you know when we have all the pairs of factors? Because they met up right in the middle, both six and six. So if we go back down, it's going to be the other numbers. So we have lots of choice for this one. What we're trying to make is the middle number, which is 12. <coughs> I can use any combination, but I have to use them in the pairs. So I can't mix and match within the pairs. Is there anything I can do to 1 and 36, put any kind of negatives I want, am I ever going to get 12? No, if we add them, we're going to get 37. If I subtract them, I'm going to get 35 or negative 35. Can't do it. What about 2 and 18? So 2 plus 18, 20. 2 minus 18, 
16, not going to work. 3 and 12, so add them. 15, subtract them, not going to work. 4 and 9, add them. 13, subtract them. 5, not going to work. What's the only pair that's going to give me 12? And who saw that right from the beginning? The more you do, the easier these become. The pairs will just jump out. So the only way to get a 12 is a 6 plus 6. I just want you to go through all the possibilities so you can see what we're trying to find there. Step 3 is just setting up the answers. I know it's going to be two binomials. Instead of starting with x and x, we're going to start with b and b. And what are the two numbers that follow? Plus 6 and plus 6. And if the binomials are exactly the same, how do we give the answer? b plus 6 squared. The beautiful thing about factoring is could you check that answer? Sure, how do we know if this answer is correct? Well, how do we know this answer is correct? What could we do? Foil it or tic-tac-toe. And if you get the question back, you know you've done it correct. <coughs> who are the puzzle people? Who like doing crosswords and sudokus and logic problems? If you're into pr problems, you'll love factoring because it all is, is a little puzzle, right? You've got to figure out what are those numbers. If you're not into puzzles, this might take a little bit more practice. And that's okay. The more you do, the easier it's going to become. Number seven, ooh, A's. Does it matter it's A and not X? <gasps> totally forgot number six. Apparently the A's really, really made me happy. Oh, x is back, okay. The product where we start is the last number, which is the 7. What are the only numbers that multiply to give me 7? 1 and 7, those are my only choices. The number I'm trying to make is 8. What is the only combination in 1 and 7 that's going to make 8? So we jump to the binomials. What are the first terms in each of the binomials? x and x. What are the numbers that are going to go in the brackets? Plus 1, plus 7. This is one you may not need to write that work. You may be able just to look and say, well, I know 1 times 7 gives me 7, and I know 1 plus eight, 7 gives me 8. That's fine. You don't need to show this. This is just more for visual people and the, when there's more combinations for the factors. Show me your thumb now. Getting it, kind of getting it, not getting it. Good. Now we can go back to 7. The A's. Again, these are just like little puzzles. We're trying to find the numbers that multiply to give us 16, add or subtract to give us negative 10. We start with 16. What are the factors of 16? So 1 and? 2 and? 3? 4 and? 4? The number we're looking for, we call the sum is negative 10. We're looking for any combination in here that's going to give us negative 10. So if you're not into puzzles and you're finding this hard, what I do is just go one by one, and I go with 1 and 16, and I add them. Can that get me 10? I subtract them. Can that get me 10? No. Go to the second step. 2 plus 8, can that get me 10? Yes. How can I get negative 10? So negative 2, negative 8. There will only ever be one combination. If you find two, you've done something wrong. There will only ever be one combination. Set up our binomials. What goes at the beginning of each binomial? A. And again, your brain's going to want to put x because there's so many questions with x. What are the numbers it's going to follow? Should we do number 8 after number 7? The more you do, the easier they're going to become. The more you do, the less work you're going to have to show. We're starting with minus 21. What are all the numbers that multiply to give us minus 21? 1 and 21. 2, 3 and 7, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, we're already there, 3 and 7, so now we have all the pairs. If this is negative, what do you know about those two numbers? One had to be negative and one had to be 
positive. We know that going in because the only way to make a negative here is they have to be opposite sign. So that gives us a little hint towards what we're looking for. We know there has to be a negative and a positive. We're looking for positive 4. 1 and 21. If we add them, can we get 4? If we subtract them, can we get 4? No. 3 and 7. If we add them, can we get 4? If we subtract them, can we get 4? Okay, so how do I get positive 4 from 3 and 7? 7 minus 3. Let's just say the question had a negative 4 here. How would that change things? So what if the sum had been negative 4? This would have been negative 7 plus 3. So it just matters the signs the way that you're going. Beginning of the binomials is going to be x and x. The numbers that follow have to be plus 7 and minus 3. m squared minus 3m plus 2. We always start at the back. Product is the last number. In this case, it's 2. And we're always happy when it's prime because we know there's only one pair. So we know it's got to be 1 and 2. No choice there. What's the number I'm looking for? Negative 3. What's the only way to get negative 3 from 1 and 2? Negative 1 plus 2. Negative 1, negative 2. What goes at the beginning of our brackets? M and M. <laughs> M and M's. What's the numbers that follow? Negative 1, negative 2. Let's just check the last one. So let's just practice that checking. Foil or tic-tac-toe? First thing I heard was tic-tac-toe. What goes along the top? M. It's like we didn't even do this yesterday. Minus 1. M minus 2. M times M. M times negative 1. M times negative 2. And negative 2 times negative 1. Okay, write them together. What's always the last step, whether we foil or we did double distribution or we did tic-tac-toe? Collect the like terms, so it's the two middle terms. Minus m minus 2m. What did our check tell us? Is it exactly the same? Good to go. Okay, so there's how to check if you're on a test or a quiz. Show me your thumbs. Yes. We're going to have a little musical interlude. 